Over the last 60 years, study after study has shown us the same thing. Among people who pursue intentional weight loss, 95 to 98% of them will regain the weight that they lost within two to five years. If you manage to keep the weight off for two to five years and you're being, and this person tells you like, it's not plausible to lose weight because if you do lose weight, you'll regain it in two years. 90 to 98%, that's still like a good five to 2%, which is I guess menial in the comparison of 100%. But if you do keep that off in two to five years, that is two to five years of your life that you're fundamentally changing for the better and you're most definitely getting good results as a, as, as a reason for that, okay? So I don't understand oftentimes why they even bring up this study as if it's not beneficial to lose weight at all. Like usually when they bring up the study, the reason why they're saying it is because they're basically saying like, oh, you're gonna regain the, you're gonna regain the weight anyway, so why even bother trying to lose weight? It's literally impractical. The weight is gonna come back anyway. Failing to realize that even getting the weight off of you for something as as small as two to five years, which is a lot of time, is going to benefit you tremendously. Think about the weight that you have on your body currently, and then think about literally taking that weight off your body for two to five years. That is going to be beneficial to a different degree. So absolutely, when I hear people say this stuff, it's it's just boring it's just boring and even if it was the case which i don't i don't I, I don't know what study they're referring to i'm pretty sure the 95 to 98 percent study is not even a study it's just like uh I, I believe it's just like they just asked a whole bunch of people or something like that i don't know but i'm pretty sure this is not a truthful study but even if it was two to five years is in a great amount of time especially to keep that weight off you i mean the alternative is literally just stay fat for the rest of your life and just have to deal with the consequences of that Two thirds of those people will regain more weight than they lost in the first place. Significant sustainable weight loss is not possible for the majority of the population. These people are so incredibly cynical. They're, they look at the, the the way they look at the world is like, oh yeah, you you shouldn't do it because guess what? It's just not plausible. You just won't lose weight. Like the way they look at it is basically like, oh, you'll never lose all the weight. Therefore, you should just never even try. Or at least if you do try, you're going to fail, which is like a terrible way of looking at it, dude. Um, If you try, at least you can try. At least you can like have the ability, just having the thought in your head of this weight is not benefiting me. I need to do something about it and try to lose weight is literally just benefit it's all benefit because you're recognizing this to be a problem whereas these people are literally looking at it not they, they don't see it as a problem which is really weird they don't see it as a problem but they're also recognizing that if you do lose weight they do see the benefit in that but they fail to see it because they also don't want to recognize it as a illness or like a problem so they try to use sugarcoating words like oh there's no there's no like correlation or causation or whatever the fuck most of the time these people are like talking out of their ass so if you do want to lose weight and you are part of that two thirds population, two to three years, two to five years is going to benefit you tremendously. So if you want to do it, I would recommend doing it. It's literally nothing but benefits. Many people who pursue intentional weight loss end up developing what's called chronic weight dissatisfaction or weight cycling. Yeah, they usually say like if you yo-yo diet or you have a weight cycling thing, usually you'll end up with more illnesses compared to if you just stayed fat or obese to begin with, which is a crazy ass thing to say because they're again, it's just basically reinforcing the idea of, well, if you try to lose weight, guess what will happen? Nothing. You'll nothing will will happen you'll just continuously be fat and if you do do even if you do lose the weight that doesn't matter because guess what you're gonna regain the weight anyway and probably gonna regain even more weight and guess what also if you regain that weight you're probably gonna be even in worse condition because you yo-yo dieted which leads to like heart failure and other diseases and things like that which i don't believe in by the way even if you do yo-yo diet and things such and so forth the alternative is literally doing nothing at all so it's just like the it's literally like oh yeah you're sitting at your house, you don't have a job, your rent's due in a, a month, and you have no money to your name, and you're sitting there contemplating, how do I make the money that I need for my rent payment? You have two options. You can either stay there and do nothing and have the rent eventually creep up on you and then have be kicked out of your house because you can't afford your rent, or two, you go out and get a job and then you pay the rent. That's really the only options. In one scenario, you might go out and you might not be able to get a job and the jobs that you get may not pay you exactly how much you need for the rent. But in the other scenario, you're literally fucked. So in both scenarios, the one that's the best one is at least try, at least try to get the money, at least try to get a job, at least try to get your finances in check. Because the other alternative is literally do nothing and suffer. That's literally it. So when I hear these people say this bullshit statement of like, oh, you'll just regain the weight anyway. 
it, it's, it's literally you're comparing somebody having no benefits of just staying obese and having all these problems compared to at least somebody trying to solve their problems. And it's really sad because they think they're the heroes in this, right? They think they're the ones that are like speaking the truth. When in reality, all they're speaking is hogwash, dude. Like, they, they can barely get sentences out of their mouth correctly because they're just like purposefully <gasps> hyperventilating because they have so much fat on their body or they're stuffing their mouth full of food and they can't form sentences like that. It's most commonly known as yo-yo dieting and it's when you gain and lose weight repeatedly. The science shows us that weight cycling poses a much larger risk to health than just staying fat. I think it's really interesting when they bring up things like the science shows, when they fail to go to the well, doesn't science show that when you're fat, you have an increased risk of like almost all diseases because your body is literally every single day being taxed to a different degree because you guys are packing on double or even triple the amount of weight that you should be holding on a daily basis? No, you don't like looking at that. I mean, just simply looking at the logical side of it, even if you want to do the one plus one, one plus one equals two, having double or triple the amount of weight on your body at a consistent pace is like literally going to tax you consistently every single day doing simple activities is going to be ridiculous that's why if you do get a cut bruise or anything like that it's going to be harder to heal from those particular illnesses because your body is literally allocating resources to so many different areas of your body to try to keep you sustainable and alive that it's going to slack off in other areas which is one of the reasons why yeah, when i remember i remember i talked to many women that um literally didn't even have periods i remember i talked to one girl and she said that she would have a period like once a once a week compared to a girl that had didn't even have a period. I remember I talked to this girl. She was like 350. And she told, she told me that she only has a period like once every three months. And I remember thinking like once every three months. And some women just perpetually bleed, which I don't even know about. Same thing with guys. Like I met a lot of dudes that literally cannot even get erections anymore because their bodies don't need to produce the hormones necessary in order for the man to like – perceive women as attractive or like get erections anymore which is a crazy ass thing like i can't couldn't even imagine being in a world where my penis couldn't be erect like i'm i'm bricked up right now like i'm solidly erect right fucking now thinking about that right but that the point i'm making is when your body is on consistent life support all the time it's gonna slack off on the things that you probably want to feel the most right like everybody wants to be sexually active everybody wants to beat off everybody wants to feel good but these things are going to be perpetually neglected because why the fuck would your body be trying to put work into these areas when it's so it's already being taxed in like all these other places? So they want to bring up the science whenever it applies to them. But whenever you bring it back to them, like, OK, well, you want to talk about science? Let's talk about this. And they go, nope, no, nope, can't do that. Nope, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. And they have no backing for that. They just continuously say the same bullshit over and over again. But when you bring up your own points, they don't they don't agree. Imagine that. You said nothing. I don't know why these people... I, I really hate it when people have the pauses. Like, they say something profound, and then there's, like, a pause to make the, the impact a little bit more. But in reality, you didn't say anything at all. You just said, like, oh, yeah, fat, if you lose weight, then it's going to be worse for you if you didn't lose weight, which is hogwash. That's bullshit. You didn't say anything of value. You just said, you just said bullshit and then just sat there and waited as if what you said was impactful. It wasn't, okay? It was bullshit. The client comes to you and they say, I definitely want to work on my relationship with my food and my body and I'd like to lose weight. And you have probably said something like, but, but I really want to know how these people get clients because let's be honest here for a second though. If you're somebody that's struggling with body image and you go to somebody that's literally fat positive or somebody that's going to tell you that you're perfect exactly the way you are, there's no point. There's literally, it makes no sense to go to somebody that's just going to reaffirm, reaffirm your own terribleness. Like people that actually have problems with themselves go to somebody because they want to hear the truth and you should want to hear the truth it's like being in a relationship or having a friend you go to these people because they may be mean about it but they're going to tell you the truth and that is extremely beneficial to actually know what your problems are as opposed to somebody just yes queening you consistently and now can you imagine paying somebody to do that sad really fucking sad you should be trying to look for the best outcome possible for your body if you know there's something wrong with you in the sense of like okay I have a lump on my neck, for instance, and you go to your friend, you go, hey, dude, I got this big, big fucking lump on the side of my neck, and it's like massive, like it's, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, it's like another person growing there, like I'm from Men in Black or something, like I have another person coming out the side of my neck, 
And your friend goes, no, dude, that's fine. That's like normal. That's completely fine. It's okay. Whatever the fuck, right? You're good exactly the way you are. Then you're probably not going to go to the doctor. You're probably not going to get it checked on. You're probably going to find, you're probably never going to find out that it was cancer or whatever the fuck it was. Or like maybe it was an alien growth or that one time that you were at that beat off party and a dude nutted on the back of your neck. Now your neck got pregnant. That might be what it is too. You never know. The point I'm making is you'll never find out now because you have people around you signi- all the time just yes queening you, telling you that you're perfect. That's never going to solve your problems. All it's going to do is just continuously put you in the same box that you were in to begin with. That's never going to be beneficial. It's always good to have people around you that are going to tell you what the problems are. That is one of the most beneficial parts about having somebody, though they may tell you the information very terribly in the sense of like, dude, you're fat as fuck, get your shit together. You're ugly, you're disgusting, get no bitches. That stuff's going to hurt you, but... It's better to know that than it is to just have somebody that's going to yes queen you over and over and over again. I would really like to know where she gets her clients from because if she does have clients that are going to her to help her to help themselves with body images, this person is literally one of the worst people you can go to. But go off, queen. Weight loss on the back burner. And you have probably said something like, let's put weight loss on the back burner. If you're going into a body image person and you're going, hey, dude, I have these problems with my eating. I have a problem with like, this gut I have, I have a problem with like that extra, you know what I'm talking about when you have that big extra growth on the side of the back of your arm, whatever that thing is called, it's like a big jellyfish. Uh, and you're going, I don't like this stuff. I don't like looking the way I do. I want to have abs. I want to have big muscles. I want to be juiced up. I want to have, I want to be able to see my bone structure. I want to do all this stuff, which by the way, none of that stuff is wrong. Go ahead. You should want to look good. Um, and the person that you're going is going, uh, let's not talk about weight loss. Mm, well, I think that's probably what I should be doing given the fact that my primary issues are to do with weight that would be the number one thing that you would do but i guess not here because this person actually doesn't believe in weight loss because it's like fat phobic or racist or whatever it is and then your client comes back and goes hold on i am gaining weight and i did not go on that or i hadn't lost any weight i was in a, a session with a client who says all right i want food freedom Food freedom is such a crazy ass word, dude. Why do we only use it on food freedom? If you don't know, food freedom is basically like coming to the understanding that food in and of itself doesn't have moral, like it's not morally restrictive in the sense of like all foods are created equal and that you shouldn't hold yourself back from eating a particular food or multiple different multiple foods because of the way that the nutritional value is distributed, which is bullshit. If anything, if that's what you want to do, at least come to the understanding of whatever the food that you're eating. You should be able to at least understand what that food is. But the way these people look at it is like a donut is equivalent to – I don't – a donut is equivalent to a chicken breast. It's the same shit because ultimately even though the calories on the donut are three times more than it is for the chicken breast, it doesn't matter because – Finding food freedom means that you should be able to eat whatever you want, whenever you want, until you're not hungry anymore. So if you feel craving to eat 15 donuts as opposed to like, I don't know, a couple chicken breasts, you should eat the donuts. Because guess what? Your body knows what it wants. It wants the 15 donuts. Eat the 15 donuts. How many calories is that? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how many calories it is. Because it's not about the calories because they don't even recognize calories. That look like for you. In three months, if you have a better relationship to food, what does it look like to you? losing weight 100%. If you're fat and you have a better relationship with food, it should be you should be losing weight. I don't understand why they even do such like relationship with food. Let's just be honest for a second, okay? It's how you eat your food, okay? If you're eating way too much food, it's not a good thing. You can use whatever words or sermon the terminologies or synonymous terms you want to, but you're eating terribly. I might say to them, if you can experience all of that, but your weight does not change or you don't lose weight, will that be okay for you? I would No, I want to look good. So even if I, which is not something that is not centered in reality, but it, hypothetically, let's say, if you could have a better sleep schedule, if you could be more nutritionally sound, if you could be healthier across the board and all this other stuff, but your weight didn't change and you're still 500 pounds, I would still not want to be 500 pounds because guess what? I can't walk at 500 pounds. Guess what? I can't breathe at 500 pounds. People don't find me attractive at 500 pounds because I have bigger boobs than my girlfriend. These things are super, super, super incentivized for a lot of people, okay? So it's not it's not just, oh, yeah, I'm healthier now, which, again, is not possible to be healthy. But 
to answer your hypothetical, still no, still no, because you're not looking at the whole entire circle. You're not looking at the whole entire circle here. You're just focusing on the health wise when it comes to eating food and being unhealthy via fatness. It's you're still unhealthy in the sense of like you're not going to be able to walk upstairs properly if you weigh 300, 400, 500 pounds. Even if you're like something as 250, 250, dude. If you're supposed to weigh 130 or 150 and you're 250, that's an extra 100 or 120 pounds extra on top of what you whatever you're supposed to weigh. So even that is going to negatively affect your experience in life. So no, I still want to lose weight. I still want to, okay? Would do this demonstration. So let's say they say, I want to start pooping regularly. I want to have more energy in the morning because all I'm drinking is coffee. I want to be sleeping dinner. My blood work came back and my cholesterol was high. If you are gaining all of this and your desire to lose weight is here, right? You see how full my hand is? Would it be fair to say for now that we're just going to hold your hand open and your body size is going to do what it's going to do? Cap You're dumb. This woman is fucking stupid. This woman is literally stupid. If you lose weight, most likely all of those things as a comp as a as a consequence of losing weight, usually all those things would improve. Usually, because if you're losing weight, that means that you're having a better understanding of nutrition. If you're having a better understanding of nutrition, you're probably eating the correct foods. If you're eating the correct foods, odds are you're probably hyper-focusing on the right foods that you should be eating and things such and so forth. So that's probably downward effect of, on, you know, having a good uh, 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 eating schedule. Maybe sleep is probably going to improve now because your body's hormones are not perpetually being fucked because you're losing weight. Now that you're losing weight, your body doesn't have to worry about all this extra stuff. You're probably going to the gym now. You're 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 incentivizing better behaviors. So losing. weight weight is literally the precipice for all of these things to happen can we hold it with an open palm for your body to do what it's going to do knowing that you might get all of these things with it and when the discomfort as your body change comes up we could talk about it i'm going to hold it with you losing weight that that this woman is on some different shit dude I, I don't understand i don't even understand the point of her story dude if somebody comes to you and says hey dude um you're a body coach like person I just want to lose weight. Like I'm perpetually unhealthy and I feel like I'd be more attractive. My life would improve dramatically if I just chose to lose weight. Like I think it would be great. And then you go, well, hold on now. I don't really know about weight loss necessarily because like my whole entire ideology binges on the fact that weight loss is not something that's good. But anyway, let's get rid. Let's move weight loss to the side and focus on the health behaviors. Okay, but like the health behaviors are probably going to correlate to the fact that I'm losing weight, right? Like if I'm having problems with bad knees and like I can't poop every day because I'm eating like five Hot Pockets for lunch and like, you know, I probably would be able to poop if I ate like actual whole foods and I put meals together and I drank more water and my sleep schedule improved and I was going to the gym and I was like exercising regularly and all that stuff was like benefiting me. Wouldn't that also like have to do with me losing weight? No, it wouldn't. None of that stuff. I can like be healthy, even though I'm 250 and I just maintain 250 consistently, even though no, that's dumb. That's fucking stupid. Solved all of my health problems. We could talk about it. I'm going to hold it with you. Losing weight solved all of my health problems, and that's why I feel amazing. Be True. Not all of them. What's really interesting about these people is that they'll always go to the extreme. And whenever I see these people go to the extreme of I lost weight, therefore all my health problems are alleviated, which never is going to happen, by the way. You can alleviate a lot of your health problems or at least cut your losses on a lot of them, and you'll definitely feel a lot better, wholly speaking. But it's never going to alleviate all your problems because that's not possible. There's never going to be one thing that's going to alleviate all your problems across the board. That's ridiculous. Because because there's more than just your weight when it comes to your health problems. So it's very, very dumb to assume that if you lose weight, everything's going to be alleviated. So no. And But these people always go to that as like a, why would you lose weight if you're not going to have all of your health problems be, be alleviated? Uh, because I'll get rid of the main ones that are negatively affecting me. That doesn't even make any fucking sense, dude. A fucking course. <sighs> That's like somebody saying, like, you can never get to your job on time because your car sucks. But I still have a car, which is going to help me get to my job faster, as opposed to not having a car, which I would not get to my job on time ever. So it's better to have something than it is to have nothing. So, yes, you want you might not be able to alleviate all of your problems, but you'll probably be able to alleviate a good amount of them, which is probably beneficial for a lot of people. So, yeah, anyway. Um, by the way, whenever somebody does that and they go to the very extreme measures of like, well, why are you losing weight if you're never going to, if it's never, if it's never going to alleviate all your problems, uh, that's a, that, that person's not do that person's not being generous. The counter to that argument is it may not alleviate all of my problems, but it will alleviate the problems that I have with the problems I have currently right now. 
like it's not going to solve your money problems like well maybe it might actually yeah it might actually do that because you're spending less money on food because i lost weight yeah but aren't you making sure you get more than four hours of sleep now right and you're making sure you're properly hydrated like at all times yes aren't you also eating foods that you enjoy like foods that you actually like eating yep and you've been reading books listening to podcasts different things to work on your mental health right true like you're in therapy and that plays a huge role in this i think I see what they're saying. They're, they're this guy because th this is the thing I always say. Like it does, the 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 weight loss is going to benefit you in particular places, and it may benefit you in mental health spaces as well. Because usually you don't have to worry about being fat. Usually, a lot of people when you're very very fat or obese, you're hyper focusing on it. Even when you don't think about things, it's usually in the back of your head. Like okay. I'm fat. I have a lot of problems with being fat because it's always coming up as an issue. When you walk upstairs, when you're with your friends, when you're out doing anything at all, it's always going to come up as a problem because you're fat. And usually that will negatively affect your mental health. When you lose weight, most definitely these things slowly start to, they slowly start to dissipate because you're not noticing these problems anymore. When you walk upstairs, you're not out of breath anymore. Therefore, you're not, you, you're, not, you're not worried about that. When you're out with the girlies or the boys, you get more male attentions or more female attention because you're thinner. You look more attractive. So that's, not, that's again, another thing you don't have to worry about. Um, you don't have as much joint pain as you once did because again, you lost weight. So therefore you don't have as many problems. So it's like, yes, you will most definitely not only alleviate the physical, but you'll also alleviate the mental because you're not having to worry about the problems with being fat. So uh, at least they're going to be sub they're going to be mitigated to a higher degree. So yes, all this stuff is also really, really important. Um, but I don't really see the point. Like if you're just benefiting your life tremendously in general, that's great. But usually nobody's saying like, I lost all this weight. My life got 100% better because of that. Usually it's like, oh, I lost all this weight. So my life has improved pretty, pretty like a lot. Like my life has improved a lot. That's all. That's usually what people say. Nobody's saying it's, it's improved their entire life across the board. Yeah, and you're not doing that thing where you fast for however many hours you actually eat when you're hungry. Ah, uh, dude, you could fast. There are plenty of people out there that fast, and it works, and it's fine, and it's good. People do intermittent fasting. I heard that's, like, really successful. I literally have friends that intermittent fast all the time, and they find great success in that. If you don't know what intermittent fasting is, it's, like, basically you eat once a day or you eat twice a day, depending on the time. A lot of people don't like to eat breakfast, so people... I already kind of already do intermittent fasting. So usually when I see people um, intermittent fast, it's usually, usually somewhere in the middle of the day. And if you do that, you eat all the calories that you would be eating in that day on that one time that you eat, which is incredibly possible. You can definitely eat 2000 calories or even more in one sitting. No problem. As long as you're eating good foods and nutritious foods that are going to fill you up and do that, whatever is it's very possible for a lot of people. A lot of people find a lot of good, a lot of good benefits from that because a lot of people think clearer because when you eat, sometimes people, are, I know I have problems with this. When you eat, your head is not as clear. You're more cloudy and things such and so forth. So when you intermittent fast, you might just be more clear, clear headed. But uh, anyway. Right. Right. And you stop using exercise as a form of punishment. Right. Nobody, yeah. bro, first of all, nobody, if you're using exercise as a form of punishment, you're dumb. Okay. Like it's okay to use exercises and not do the things that you want to do when it comes to exercises. Like I don't like squatting, but I squat because I know it's really good for my legs. It's really good for my butt cheeks. It's really good for the performance of my body. I don't like it necessarily, but I would not consider it to be punishment. I just consider it to be unnecessary. There are going to be things in your life that you don't want to do, but you do it anyway because you're an adult and that means that you're responsible. So if you're going to the gym and you're not doing and you're do not doing exercise because you consider it to be punishment, that's dumb. Don't look at it as that. You look at it as like, well, even though I don't want to do this, I still will do it because I know that it's going to be beneficial for me. And usually right after you do the exercise, you feel amazing. Like, tell me I'm fucking wrong. You feel like you did something because the exercises that you do that are easy, the ones that you like, those are easy. Those are the ones you like. You're obviously going to feel great doing those regardless. But if you do the ones you don't like, you get an increase. You get more value out of that. You feel better as a consequence. You're, you're only moving when you want to, exercising when you want to. That's still a, not a good idea. You should be moving on a schedule. You should have the ability to do, like, don't get me wrong. You, okay, have a day, have a two days where you're not doing anything. It's fine. You could be sedentary for a few days at a time, but you should most definitely be incentivizing walking. You should be most definitely incentivizing activity because guess what? We live in a, a westernized civilization where these things are not very incentivized. Most people nowadays have jobs where they stay inside all day. Home, work from home jobs or working in office jobs, right? It's very few, very few jobs nowadays where you're going out working on a field or some shit like that. So you're going to have to find ways to move your body very, very uh, uh, actively um, because you're not going to be able to get it in perform. You're not going to be able to get it in the professional world. Well, you got a point there right it's not i'm gonna run this many miles to burn this many calories because i ate this yeah. yesterday 
it's not, I have to do this, I have to do that. You're working out when you want to because you want no, to. No, but he, that's a weird way of looking at it. Like if you did something wrong, if you ate 4,000 calories that day and the next day you just – like it's all right to do that every once in a while where you eat 4,000 calories one day and the next day you go back to your, your diet, it's fine. But you should most definitely be looking at the calories that you're eating and try not to be eating four, five, six, seven thousand 7,000 calories a day and think that that's not going to do anything. That is most definitely going to do something. And if you want to burn off calories as a consequence of that, you can. You can go to the gym. There are plenty of ways to burn off those excess calories. I literally do that where I eat a little bit more than what I need and then I'll just go to the gym or I'll walk a long distance of time so that way I can eat that amount of food and I can still – I can eat more food than I would usually eat, and I can still burn off the calories because I'm being more active that day, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, no, I mean, you should be look. This is dumb. That's a dumb way of looking at it. Is there Are there no consequences to eating high-calorie foods and just leaving that on your body and doing nothing that day? Okay, I guess. Just move your body in the way that you want to, even though it's not actually going to accomplish anything. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. You're right. And on top of that, you're also eating enough. That, 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 okay, <laughs> eating enough is subjective. Some people eat enough more than other people. So like, for instance, it's it's all relative. If you're a five foot two woman, maybe you only need to eat 1200 calories. Whereas a guy that's six foot two, he can probably eat 3000 calories and not gain a single pound because he's a big man, big man, right? It's relative. You're eating as much as you need. Some people don't know how much they need because they have a they have a mis idea that they're looking at other people and they're seeing them eat a lot of food and they're going, well, if they're eating a lot of food, I can eat a lot of food. Nah, you're not like that. You're not that person. Sorry, it is what it is though. But uh, anyway. To supplement those workouts. Does that make sense? Yes, 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 you're, you're, yes, 100%, yes. You're talking to your steering wheel right now too, by the way. At least it would have been a little bit better if you were like looking out the window or something like that. However, I think you're missing the point. Let's talk about it because I deeply understand this. I cry about I cry about the life I could have if I were skinny. I am so it's so isolating and sad. It makes me want to just not be alive because life is not fun when you're not attractive. Nothing ever works out. Yeah, this is a very pessimistic person. I would not agree. There are gonna be times in your life where you're not gonna feel the best, and that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna have times like that, right? But I would never I would never feel bad because you think you look worse than another person. There are plenty of things that could make you more attractive, that can make you feel better, that are like attractiveness is always not is not always going to be the be all end all. How do you know that even if you felt really attractive, that's going to solve the majority of your problems? And I don't know. Like it's just something to think about. That might not be the the root of your problem, but there are things that you can do. If you're fat, then you can most definitely lose weight and that would make you more attractive. But just have realistic standards. Like I know some people are like that one girl I did a video on where she was like, "Well, if I still, if I lose weight, I'm still six foot and I'm still like wide bodied and I'll never be a model. I'll never be like a cheerleader. I'll never have this body. Yeah, so what? But that doesn't matter. Like, that's not a reason to not lose weight. How, what kind of reason is that? Like, that'd be like me going like, oh, I'm, I'm never going to like lose weight because I'm never going to be a NASCAR. Yeah. I know. You're never going to be an ass car. It's unrealistic standards. Why the fuck do you want to be a transformer? You're not going to be a transformer. You're a human being. So don't have unrealistic expectations. Understand where you are in your life and understand what your body is capable of doing and just emphasize that. Compare yourself to you, yourself the day after, the day before. Sorry. Stop comparing yourself to other people. There's always going to be somebody that's better looking. There's always going to be somebody that's doing more than you, but that's okay because that doesn't necessarily mean that it's what they should be doing or like how to like, it's not a good way to live your life. You should be looking at yourself day to day, not anybody else. This feeling, but I just want to say you can be fat and have an amazing life. I think I do. That's a proof of Yeah, but it's not helping that person to say that. Like if they're having, look. If this person is having a problem and they're saying like the weight is an issue for them and your solution is, oh, but you can be happy if you're fat. Okay, that's fine. That's great. But that doesn't really like give them good information, dude. Like they want to lose weight, it seems like. But anyway. Cool. I want to say you can be fat and have an amazing life. I think I do. And to prove it to you, here's a photo of me and my boyfriend in Santorini. Look how freaking happy I look and I am exactly as fat there as I am today. I know it can So is that like a So that's like that's the reason, huh? Guys, guess what? That's oh man, that's really not what you're supposed to do. That's like somebody coming up to you. Let's say you're a millionaire and your friend comes up to you and he goes, "Dude, I am broke. I have no money. My family is perpetually in debt. I literally just took out another loan so I could pay off my credit card bills. I'm literally paying credit card bills with credit card bills. And um, my, my, my wife has a kid. She's on the way. My house is literally about to be foreclosed. I don't know what to do. You have all this, you know, like 
you know what you're talking about. It's like, what do I do? And then you go, listen, bro, you can make more money. Look at, look at this picture of me standing next to, look at this picture of me standing next to the pile of billions of dollars that I have. Isn't that great? You could do that too one day. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's, <sighs> you know what? You're totally right. Anyway, um, do you mind if I borrow that gun that you have? And I'm going to go in the bathroom real quick. Prom I promise you'll never have to deal with any of the problems that I'm ever going to talk to you about ever again. That's not going to, that's not going to alleviate your problem, dude. That's a terrible way of like, if this person is genuinely have a problem, you're over here talking about some, I know you're sad, but guess what? I'm not, okay? Damn, <laughs> that's fucked up. And I get that is not what she said exactly, but that's basically the idea of what she was saying. It can feel bleak and it can feel like your life can never possibly be as good as it is if you were better looking, more conventionally attractive, thinner, whatever. And to some degree, I can't deny that is true because people would treat you better and you would have more access to more things. But yeah, and again, like if somebody's having all these problems and they're like, oh, I can't get a girlfriend or I can't get a boyfriend. I'm so fat. I can't walk upstairs. I can't do this. And your solution to that is, well, I'm fat and I have no problem with those things. That's not helping that person. That's literally not even a solution for them. You're, you're, just, you're just bragging about yourself at that point. You're just humbly bragging at your at this fucking point, dude. This person needs advice, and you're literally talking about how great your life is, okay? That's great, dude. I mean, that's not going to help me, though, is it? What that person actually needs to hear is comforting information. Like, okay, hey, dude, yeah, I get it. Like, you're probably going through a lot of problems right now, and, you know, being fat is most definitely, yeah, I agree. Like, it's probably not helping you. Let's see what we could do. Like, together as, like, a team, um, you know, I obviously uh, have never had a problem with weight, but I know some things, and I think if we put our heads together, we can probably solve this together. Like, let's get into the gym. Let's work on a calorie deficit. We can definitely look up some videos, some Nikki tutorials on how to make you pretty or whatever the fuck. I don't know. You watch James Charles or something like that. I don't know. There are plenty of things that we can do, like, right now that will easily alleviate this problem in the next first year future not hey i know you're having this problem but guess what me and my boyfriend are so happy and i'm living my hashtag best life ever that's not gonna solve a problem dude that person's gonna be looking at themselves in the mirror like fuck fuck that's like they're, they're just terrible it's terrible information more access to more things but there is a lot of really great stuff out there that you can still do it depends on the person i'm not gonna say that you for sure definitely can do all these things, but like- Why not just recommend losing weight instead of going, well, even though you can't really do a lot of stuff, there are some things that you can do while in a fat body. Why not just recommend the person just lose some weight, just a little bit of weight? I don't know, like if you're struggling to do basic human being stuff and you're literally complaining about the fact that your fatness is prohibiting you from doing that, you do realize that you can lose that weight and you'll have more accessibility to those things, right? Like it's not, it doesn't always have to be like, oh, yeah, work within the realms that you have. Like, granted, if you're missing a leg, then probably you can't run, and that's okay. Like, it's fine that you can't run because you're missing a leg. Like, what are you going to do about it? But if you're fat, then, like, dude, yeah, just lose some weight, and you'll have access to walking again or, like, walking for large stretches of time or just, like, going upstairs or something basic like that. Why not just recommend losing weight? Let me just like list off some of them for you. Number one is travel. I have traveled pretty extensively around Europe and a little bit outside of that. And I've been around the United States a lot. Yes, airplane seats are small. There are ways around it. There are a lot of places with- There ha doesn't have to be ways around it. Like you shouldn't be looking for like cheats <laughs> or like accessibility tools to make things like this a more company. Dude, if you just lost weight, the, the, the thing would be literally alleviated completely. You wouldn't have to even worry about buying a second seat or like not being able to fit into the seat that you have or having to bring along like an air, uh, a seatbelt extender because you know that you're not gonna be able to fit in that particular type of seat. Like these things are not things that you should have to worry about. You could just lose the weight and and then when you lose the weight, or at least lose a little bit of weight to where you don't have to worry about whether or not you have to buy a second seat or not. That's ridiculous. The fact that you're even making these claims is like, crazy. Passenger of size policies. If you can get to travel, like that's something you can do no matter what you look like. Yeah, but like what about the money situation, dude? It's not as simple as like, oh yeah, just travel. Oh really? It's just like that. It's like that one girl that was like, oh, if you're homeless, then like buy a house. It's like that. Like, what do you fucking... It's not as simple as like, oh, yeah, just travel. Really? It's just travel, huh? Like, I'm fat. I have no job. I'm poor. My my, <laughs> my wife is, like, giving birth. Like, you understand? Like, it's not as simple as these things. Like, you, you're you saying this stuff. I understand. But you have to... I mean, maybe I'm wrong, dude. Maybe I'm wrong. But I just feel like this person is, like, thinking about it in the wrong perspective. And I have never felt as good about my... Like, just be... Things that you can do right now to alleviate your situation, okay? 
it would be to lighten your calories. Sig not significantly, definitely lighten your calories just a little bit. Work within a deficit. You can walk more, and walking more will get you outside of the house, which is beautiful because nature exists. And just simply looking outside at a tree and seeing the, the fucking blossoming trees is beautiful, okay? The other day, I was literally outside of a tree waiting for my laundry to get done, and I was just looking at a tree for somewhat like 10, 15 minutes. It was beautiful. That tree was amazing looking, dude. I think this, seeing the fucking growth on the tree was amazing. Okay, just simply walking outside and embracing nature for what it is or even like walking down the street and seeing a homeless guy doing heroin or having an old lady, you know, throw stuff at another guy because he wouldn't open the door for her. That stuff's like all awesome and you can experience that stuff because you're outside walking, enjoying life. Like that's something that you could do right now that would cost you literally zero money and it's everybody has accessibility to that shit. So, I mean, you know, whatever, dude. It's just really sad to be like, oh, you can travel, but, like, you're probably really fat. So, if you travel, then you're probably going to have to get two seats. So, yeah, I'd probably just go to, like, I don't know, whatever the airline is that gets you the free seats, I guess. Or, like, buy a seatbelt extender. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> way to really show off the privilege. Body as when I am traveling, seeing new things, having experiences, and uh, just objectively having things happen to me because that is sometimes what it feels like you're missing out on by being fat like nothing good will ever happen to you it's true and you're also limiting yourself tremendously from being fat like i mean i get it you have a boyfriend i'm sure he loves you and stuff like that but let's just be honest for a second being fat is not going to benefit you in the dating market dudes are not attracted to fat girls in the same way that girls are not attracted to fat guys most people are just not attracted to you and if you are attracted to those people odds are those people are just looking for one particular thing which is fine if you want to just have sex with people but most people are looking for relationships so if you're trying to find a relationship and the dude that you're talking to keeps talking about your fucking fupa and how he wants to strangle himself underneath it probably not the guy you want to date probably not the guy you want to be with for a long period of time given the fact this guy literally is telling you what he wants to do to you it's not productive okay it's not like i'm happy that you and your boyfriend have a loving caring relationship and you guys care about each other and stuff like that but to sit there and be like oh you can find love I mean, sure, but, like, that's not going to actually benefit the person at all, given the fact that they're probably having trouble. Like, if somebody is going through the dating market and they're getting nothing in return, nothing, like, and when they do get stuff in return, it's, like, just sexual comments or whatever, and you go, no, you're perfect exactly the way you are. You're just going to keep trying. Well, fuck you. This shit hasn't worked for five years. Why the fuck is it going to work for the next five years? I'm literally not getting any younger. So it's, like, it's just useless information. It's not actually benefiting anybody, and... Like, I'm glad that you have a relationship, but me and you are obviously two different fucking people. Maybe you just got lucky, or maybe you found, like, a really good guy. But, dude, it has not worked for me, so maybe I, should need, maybe I need to try something different, which is fine. Like, you should try something different if it's not working, obviously. And even if you can't actually travel, like, traveling around your city, going for car rides, going for hikes, like, looking around for beautiful stuff in your environment... That is something that's 100% just as available to you. As uh, but your legs are going to be hurting on the way out, right? Definitely. I mean, I, I agree you should be trying to enjoy your environment as much as you can. Just simply looking at nature is going to benefit you tremendously. And also, it's the added benefit of, like, losing some calories because you're walking around. You, you, like, try to make an objective for you. Like, okay, hey, I'm going to go on this walk. But, and it, it, like, I don't really just want to go on walks, right? Because that's gay. Who the fuck just goes on walks? I don't know, like, think, I'm going to go to McDonald's, and when I go to McDonald's, I'm going to get my coffee from McDonald's from the Mexican ladies behind the counter, but I'm going to reward myself with that coffee by walking the entire destination to that particular establishment, and then walking back so I can enjoy that coffee on the way back. That's fine. That's great. That's what you should do, matter of fact. Make a thing of it. What are you, like, spending, like, a dollar at the McDonald's for a coffee? That's literally what I do. When I go to get my coffee, I literally walk, and it's like a mile away, which is fine. Like, I have no problem with it. Maybe you won't have any problem with it, and it's really fine. Like, I literally enjoy walking. I really love it because you get to enjoy the scenery, enjoy the environment around you. It's beautiful. As it is. Just like you. Just like you. Anyone else. There's definitely a question of ability here, and maybe you're not able-bodied, and you can't, like, say, climb a mountain. But even so, like, even just driving around, there's a lot of beauty in the world that you can experience and see and enjoy. To me, personally, that's what makes life worth living. I'm kind of a nature girl, and I grew up in Vermont, so that, for me, has always felt like something that I, that doesn't involve my body, that doesn't, that I don't have to deserve to experience. Well, you're most definitely going to impede your ability to walk when you're fat, but I see what she's saying. Definitely, you can enjoy nature without without through the realm of walking i guess if you want to drive too but that kind of defeats the purpose but i guess she's really looking for ways in which a person can navigate the world while being fat without losing weight which is dumb because you should be trying to lose weight especially if you want to like 
I don't know, enjoy your life to the fullest. After many years of work, I've also been able to experience, like, enjoying food as a part of that. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. You enjoying food a little bit too much. Let's be honest for a second. You know you enjoying food, and maybe you enjoying food way too much, given the fact that you're literally obese. And you know what? You should enjoy the food that you eat. I have no problem with that. But the problem oftentimes is like these people are not using it for the reason why food exists to begin with, which is it's fuel. It's supposed to fuel your body. And if you were looking at it through the uh, through the idea, through the realm, through the glasses of this food is supposed to fuel me, I promise most people would probably put down the extra serving or the double chocolate chip cookie ice cream, whatever the fuck it is. Because if you're worried, if you're really, really, really wondering why you feel like shit, it's because you are what you eat. You consistently eat terrible, disgusting foods. You're going to feel like terrible, disgusting consistently. And it's really, really, really disingenuous when you hear people go, well, uh, people need to eat. Food is literally like, you need to as a human being eat. I know you do, but it's really fucked up to sit there and go, you need to eat. While this person is literally body slamming 2,000 calories worth of ice cream. Like, okay, yes, I get it. You do need to eat. But this person is literally eating two, t two or three times more than what they should eat in a day. That's crazy, okay? Eat food, definitely, and you should enjoy the food that you eat. But it shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be eating double or triple the amount of calories that you need in a day. And I feel like if you didn't do that consistently, you would actually enjoy your food more because it's like somebody saying, I love you 24 seven compared to somebody saying, I love you once a day. It impacts more. It hits harder when somebody says that I love you once a day. It does. If it's, it, it's way, 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 way harder. That too. So that is something that you can, or like, it's like, it's like the person that you really, really like telling you that they like you back or like they like things about you compared to just some random people on the internet or like maybe those guys that are hitting you up in the DMs going like, oh my God, you're so pretty today. By the way, tell me I'm pretty. It's it's a lot, it hits a lot different when somebody that you actually care about or somebody that actually cares about you tells you because you know, the, the random dudes hitting you up on the internet telling you like good morning text messages or you're sexy or you look good are just basically meaningless like because it's like you don't even know these people and you don't know me so even if you do tell me this like do you actually mean that or are you just saying that because you think i'm going to respond in a sexual manner or i'm going to give you the time of day to like get in my pants or smell my vagina or my barracuded vagina or whatever the fuck there are plenty of reasons why random guys will hit you up and do that shit by the way but it it hits a lot harder when your mom your dad your sister your uncle your boyfriend your, your whatever hits you up with that same type of thing because it's a lot more impactful it's actually flavored up because you know it's coming from a genuine place instead of just some random person with what is put his penis hard same thing with girls girls can also do that but usually girls aren't the ones that are trying to solicit sex from men so get there for to also enjoy as a part of life and experiencing things. Sometimes people are shallow, but a lot of people are not and are really chill. And I've had a lot of amazing friends in my life, amazing social times. Making art is something that anybody at any size can do in some capacity. Sure. Yes, I'm an actor and that definitely, there's gatekeeping, you don't- I would love to know what she means by actor. Like what, do you do like a YouTube short one time where you like blew your nose into a tissue and then like looked at the camera like, oh my God. Does that count as acting nowadays? I guess. It's it's so ambiguous nowadays when people say, I'm a model, I'm an actor, I'm a social media influencer, I'm a this, I'm a that. And you like, you look at these people like, what have you modeled exactly? And you're like, oh, I take pictures from my Instagram. I guess. I mean, if that's what you want to classify yourself as, it's fine. Like, <laughs> fine, whatever. Don't always get opportunities, but you can make your own stuff. We live in a really incredible era where we all have these little squares that can record us doing things. It's a rectangle. A square could be a rectangle, but a rectangle cannot be a square. So it's a rectangle. What phone do you have that's a square, okay? What are you, like, typing on a Game Boy? And capture our art and disseminate it to, like, people all over the world. It's kind of fucking incredible. True. And that's something anybody at any size can do. You can write, you can sing, whatever. There's something. Something creative that will be fulfilling to you and make your life worth living. At the end of the day, comparison is the thief of joy. It is true what they say. And worrying about your appearance is comparing yourself to other people. I Not really. If you're comparing, well, you should at least, you should be understanding your, if you're concerned about your market value when it comes to dating, you should at least be understanding where you compare to other people roughly. That is very important to see where you are compared to other people. And usually you can get that from maybe a really good friend or somebody that's not going to be biased or somebody that is going to be biased, but at least give you good information. Or maybe you can just compare and contrast, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a reflection completely to where you are in the dating market. It's just like an idea. It's like the BMI. It just gives you a rough idea. And you can work based off of those things. So... If you're a five, 
That's that doesn't mean that you can't be a six or a seven. You can most definitely improve yourself in immeasurable ways to make yourself tremendously more attractive. And sometimes it doesn't even always have to do with being physically attractive. It could just be you're working on your mental capacity. Maybe you're better in conversation. Maybe you're funnier now. Maybe you have like a, a, you have an increased ability to like I don't know have conversations with people more real sociable. That stuff's like really beneficial for a lot of people. And even though you're a five on the outside, you're probably like a ten on the inside. And a lot of people should develop those physical and also emotional and mental traits because those are really really important for like a lot of people i know that i don't like being with somebody that's dumb or somebody that doesn't have a lot of mental capacity which is fine for a lot of people like it's great if that's what you want that's what you want but for me it's not and i want somebody that can challenge me that's somebody that will be able to talk back somebody that will be able to have conversations that's like really important that will make you really really attractive so even in realms of like oh i'm not the most attractive physically speaking like for me for instance i know that i'm like basically a five like i'm a five right which is fine i have no problem with being a five most people are fives there's nothing wrong with being an average person um but i know that i can amplify things about myself to make myself maybe a six or a seven and i know that those things are probably ambiguous to a lot of people like you probably wouldn't realize that i'm good in conversation or i'm good and i'm funny or whatever the fuck i'm not saying i am i'm just saying like these things are things you could work on and when you meet the right person maybe they can identify that stuff and find the real value within you and it's always beneficial to look better. It It is because people oftentimes will be more attracted to people that look better. So you should be trying to make yourself physically more attractive. And you can do that through the realm of diet and exercise. Most definitely going to the gym, becoming a muscle mommy, becoming a muscle daddy, working out consistently. That stuff's like super great. Health indicators are going to make you physically more attractive in general. I mean, you don't even have to compare yourself. Just having big biceps, big butt cheeks in terms of like glutes. Um, and, and squats and stuff like that, that stuff's like really good for man, men or women. So even just basic health indicators are literally going to are gonna amplify you tremendously, okay? Anyway. We do talk about it on here, but there's so much life off of the internet that I'm living, that other fat people are living, and it's- But there. you don't have to be a fat person. Like, I think that this person's getting too caught up on the living as a fat person part. You don't have to live as a fat person. If being fat is negatively affecting your life, and you're seeing that it's literally every step of the day, it's it's constantly negatively affecting you, you should- you should want to lose weight, then that's fine. You you can't. Yeah, I think it's great that you want to lose weight, and it probably benefits you tremendously. Like I said earlier in the video, uh, you know, the mental aspect of that, consistently worrying about the fact that you're fat, or having to worry about the consequences of being fat through your day to day life, which is something you're probably gonna have to. Most people are probably dealing with. And sure, there are gonna be those people that probably don't really look at those things. Like maybe it just becomes a normality to their life. Like they don't have to worry about it anymore. The fact that they have all these extra issues with their knees and their joints and their back, and you know, they they have to go to the doctor now way more often, get blood work done they have high blood pressure and now they have to take cholesterol pills and things like that but the 24 they shouldn't have to take this because their high blood pressure is through the roof you those things are most definitely going to negatively affect your mentality and the way that you think about stuff because it's constantly on your mind you are always dealing with the problems of being obese and just because you're not thinking about those things doesn't mean they're not negatively affecting you mentally speaking when you don't have to worry about them anymore they're not going to be in your brain anymore they're gonna, you're not going to think about these you're not going to think about these things so it could be really really incentivized to lose weight because if you lose weight you won't have to worry about walking up the stairs or being out of breath and having to worry about whether or not your high blood pressure is going to negatively affect you today or maybe you are like you know on the verge of being type 2 diabetic like these things are things that you don't have to worry about anymore because you lost weight and now you, your, your body doesn't feel as bad because you only have one body i mean until like elon musk plugs us up into the the metaverse or i don't know crispa comes through and they like prolong our lifespans the organic way then like we're just stuck like this okay and you should probably try to accentuate them as much as you can the natural lifespan of yourself and then also accentuate the physical beauty of what you have like it's a disservice to not see what your body can actually do so you should try as much as you can to work on yourself and this goes for just more than just physical aspects like work on your brain become smarter read a book every once in a while i mean i don't read books but i like watching seven hour documentaries on like ancient ancient Rome or ancient Greece or like ancient Mesopotamia or the Mycenaeans and you know like I don't know like it's okay it's good to be well informed on a particular types of stuff and it's really good in conversations because you can just randomly bring up stuff or like if somebody if it's dry in a conversation or whatever you could just start talking about things that don't really even matter because most of the time people don't really give a fuck what you're talking about just talking in general is like really entertaining for a lot of people unless you're weird if you're weird then you're weird but most people especially like if you're trying to make friends most people are just chill most people will just have conversations with you and especially if somebody has a same passions as you like i know that i like star wars and do you know there's like a lot of people on the alien on the internet like star wars too i could just get friends based off that same thing with Yu-Gi-Oh. same thing with like i don't know greek philosophy and shit like that it's all entertaining for a lot of people so like even 
having basic interests like that are going to benefit you tremendously. And guess what? That's working on yourself. That's literally making yourself a better human being day to day to day. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you're a worse human being for not knowing that stuff. I'm just saying this stuff's going to make you better in the sense of like building friends, becoming more intelligible, you know, like the simple stuff. So I don't know if you're looking for a reason to live, if you're looking for a reason to become um, better, better, harder, faster, stronger, whatever Kanye said, you can do things like that. Working on yourself through the realm of physicality, walking more, becoming more intelligent by you know, I don't know, watching documentaries and I don't know, not even just documentaries. If you watch whatever the fuck you want. That's just something I like to do. You can do a lot of that stuff. Be better in conversation because now you have this knowledge about some random dinosaur that you saw a documentary on or read a book about. Or maybe you found out that kangaroos have three vaginas and now you want to enlighten somebody that kangaroos have three vaginas. And you wondered what it would be like if you had three vaginas and like how would that even work? What vagina would you use first, right? I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you could just talk about to some people and it's like infinitely people are infinitely interesting i i'm sick of when people think that people are boring some people can be boring but i feel like in general people are not boring these people are just don't know how to bring out the unboringness about them some people have an inability to talk or have conversation things like that um you just like sometimes you just have to le leave those people alone but the people that are genuinely trying to have conversations with you are infinitely interesting you can you can ask them so many different questions to get into the nitty gritty. And one of the best parts about meeting somebody for the first time is definitely like understanding those like hidden traits and those hidden talents and understanding what makes them tick and understanding like, wow, you're really cool. Like, I, I really like the way you think. I really like the way that you thought about that. That stuff's like really cool. And this is not even just for relationships in terms of like boy girl relationships. It could just be like, man, this is my guy friend. I like hearing what he has to say about this. Or like, I don't know, like this girl that I know, she's really fucking cool because she likes Hello Kitty. I didn't even know Hello Kitty's was, but she told me about it. It's really awesome, right? I don't know maybe like watching my little pony you want to tell somebody about that shit it's a little weird but go ahead it's like it's, i think it's fine the point i'm making is like there's a ton of stuff that you can do that will make you more personable that is going to make you better in conversation it's going to make you more i don't know accentuated in your day-to-day -day life and it's simple things like it doesn't need to be like big giant mega changes like even in the realm of like losing weight it's a slow tedious process but it's a process that's going to make you more delicious as a person so i think definitely something you should invest in for you to and in some capacity i promise there's a certain Ooh, these lashes are not it dude she got those fucking pegasus those pegasus lashes man toughness that develops when you spend a lifetime justifying your right to exist we i feel like these people set themselves up for failure like it's really good to have toughness but if you're literally making yourself terrible just to build like trauma is not good for trauma's sake like i hate it when people go Oh, you need to be a strong man. You need to be a strong woman. You need to be a strong this and this and this. And I see people sometimes literally putting themselves in the lion den. So that way they can, I don't know, build up this like artificial barrier of resistance because they've been through the ringer so many times. Like that is terrible. I don't think that you should just be going through stuff because you want to be stronger. That is not a good idea. But what you should be instead doing is having the ability to take trauma and roll with the punches or at least rebound from that particular type of trauma. Like everybody should have that ability. But having trauma for trauma's sake is terrible. So like if you're fat and then you're putting yourself on the internet, making cringy videos and then going, I'm so strong because I can tolerate it. I mean, sure. But like, why the fuck are you fat making cringy videos on the internet? Like, Go ahead, go off, queen. It's what you want to do, but it's obviously not helping your mental health. But whatever, dude, go do what you want. Build our armor in order to survive. It's part of our magic. I wouldn't say it's magic. It's more like musk. My wish for fat folks is that we also have access to vulnerability. Vulnerability? Yeah, you could totally be vulnerable, but like on the internet? Probably not. I don't know. Why do people want to be vulnerable everywhere they go? It's probably the best decision ever to not show vulnerability on the internet. And if you do, maybe do it in a place where it's going to be a little bit more acceptable. Not just the entire like spectrum of TikTok or the internet in general. It's fucking terrible. I don't know. Get on a Zoom call with your grandparents or something and talk to them about your terribleness. Not on the internet and tell people how strong you are because you built up resilience from getting bullied online. What the fuck are you talking about? I wish we didn't all have to be so tough. All You're on the internet, dude. I mean, look, it just depends on where you're at in the world. Depending on where you are, you won't have to be tough. If you're like in the presence of your grandparents, I'm probably sure that you're going to be okay most of the time, probably, unless they tell you that you're fat and you don't like that. I don't know. Maybe your grandparents are trying to tell you something good. You know, and often even somebody saying that you're fat is not necessarily a bad thing. It's probably just them telling you like, hey, dude, I was probably fat, you know, like, that's not a good thing. Like, hey, you should probably lose weight because it's not healthy. If you think that's a negative thing, then you have a problem. Like, you literally have an issue. The time. 
And sometimes I worry that the beautiful armor that we build. I don't know about beautiful armor, dude. I mean, you're literally wearing like, what do you even call? Is this not uncomfortable? Is this not like itching the side of your eyes? I just really think if you're going to dye your hair, never dye your eyebrows. This looks actually cringe. This looks uncanny valley type shit, dude. Way too fucking pink. It's kind of blending into the skin a little bit. She has no lips. So, like, I don't know why she's emphasizing them so much, but whatever, man. I just don't like the eyebrows. Like, have them be your regular shade of color. Why did you dye them? That's weird. That's really weird. Can become a king. Doesn't it take like a long time for the for the dye to get out of your eyebrows because it takes longer for your eyebrows to grow, right? So like, if this goes away, you're gonna still have like really pink eyebrows. But I guess it doesn't matter because you're probably gonna dye them green, purple, purple, green, whatever. Of our own making. I wish for us. What are you Space doing, dude? Put your armpits down, bro. Wear some deodorant. Dude. That should be stench. Woo! Softness that we embody innately. Safety to access the sensitivity that we live. What the live, fuck are you doing? But must often bury. Okay, I can't do this video. Okay, this woman is cringe. This woman is literally like ungodly levels of cringe. She's actually terrible to fucking look at. What is this like? Oh, yeah, check me out, guys. I'm so strong. I'm so powerful because I'm moving my finger across my palm. And that's real. That should really incentivize you guys to understand that I'm like super strong anyway. I'm about to go eat my spaghetti and meatball sandwich that I made two hours ago because I'm hungry again, even though I just ate 25 minutes ago. That's what I'm basically hearing. And then also, do you take off these lashes after you're done? Dude, these things look really impractical. Where do you even go where you wear this? And somebody goes, wow, Slay Queen, sis, edges. This looks terrible. It looks absolutely bad. Okay, I'm just going to keep it a buck. It doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. But anyway, it doesn't matter. You know what does matter? You. You matter. You matter so much to me. And I think that you're a beautiful person. I really do think you're a beautiful person. I think you're lubricated. I think you're wonderful. I think you smell great. I think you don't even have to wear deodorant because your body emanates such beautiful juices in and of itself that I want to marinate myself in your beauty. But anyway... If you watch the video, um, I would appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. I want to thank everybody that's a member, everybody that's subscribed. Thank you so much. If you want to become a member, all you have to do is click the subscribe button, which I'd appreciate, and then hitting the member, hitting the join notification that comes up right after that, which I'd appreciate. But if you don't want to do any of those things, that's fine. You spending the time with me today is enough for me. And trust me, it is 100% enough for me. You're a beautiful specimen of human being. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in cat, however you spell cat, K-A-T, C-A-T, C-A-T-T, -T -T, or maybe even just a cat emoji. If you want to throw that down there too, I don't care. I love all of those things. Cats are beautiful specimens of human being, and I truly appreciate their existence. I love that they literally don't do anything. You know what's really crazy is that cats literally just chill all day. They sleep for like 12 hours a day, 12 to, I think it's like 12 to 18 hours a day. They have no predators because we take care of them. They're literally domesticated and they just chill. Like, think about this. Cats entire lives are defined by doing nothing and human beings everyday life is defined by doing everything. Isn't that weird? We're literally two sides of the opposite of the same coin, everything and nothing. I wonder how would it would feel if you were like to change the places of that where you don't have to worry about anything you just have your food delivered to you you sleep all day you get your pets you get your love i don't know man it just kind of seems like a weird life to live right because like i've only ever known this life i think it would be crazy if i went no if i knew what i know now and i was a cat obviously i wouldn't want to do that because being a cat would suck in comparison to being a human being because you don't have one of these you don't have the thumbs and you can't play video games and you also can't talk to people like i'm talking to you right now i mean maybe you could but it'd be very unsuccessful but Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't even know what we're talking about right now. You're beautiful. You smell really great today. I love your skin. I love the way that you marinate yourself in liquids like water in terms of cleansing yourself properly, bathing yourself, getting rid of the odors and the stench. But to be honest, the stench that emanates off your body is pretty delightful. So sometimes I want to give a little bit of on you because I need that organicness, the beauty of you in general. But anyway... That's the end of the video, guys. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter and my Discord and other things like that will be linked in the description of this channel and also the description of this video. All you have to do is click about and then you'll see the rest of it. But anyway, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.